Okay. Guess what I'm doing? It's recording. Christmas Eve, December 24th of 2022. Probably about Hello. nine, 20 minutes after 9 p.m. Obviously, I'm resting. This is the stuff that Amari likes to do. Drives me freaking nuts. You don't know. When I'm out and about moving around in the kitchen, whatever, it's not a big deal. But when I want to lay down and I just want it quiet for a little while, or maybe I just want to watch a movie, you know? And he's doing that. And he gets loud. And he comes up with these really weird noises. Can you hear him? <laughs> That's why I thought I'd turn on this camera so you know what I go through, right? Right, Amari? What are you doing? What's this? Stuff, huh? He comes up with, he's coming up with all kinds of new sounds. Mm, so anyway, I'm thinking about the next subject at hand here, and I think I'm going to call this video, um, oh, I had a title for it. Um, I can't think now. Where people assume that you're taking things for granted. Or, no, not granted. You're ungrateful. When people assume, it wasn't the word I was trying to use. But it's similar, right? In terms of, when people think you're ungrateful, right? Or something like that. Okay? Because we know I signed up with the Christmas Bureau this year, right? And, um, anyway, when they dropped off the boxes, right? Which was on the 17th. As they were bringing them in, there was this lady who said, <coughs> There's six boxes. I said, oh, Amari. I said, oh, okay. Thank you very much, right? <coughs> and then they left. <coughs> <coughs> when I counted the boxes, there was only five. And I thought, okay, well, one got misplaced and went to another household. Andre, I'm talking. <coughs> One went to another household. So be it. Pass it on, right? You know how they say pass it on, right? Okay. Then I get a phone call from the uh, Kennedy pub, their staff, or owner or whoever, saying that, you know, there's still one more thing to drop off, and they're wanting to drop it off on Christmas Eve, if that's okay with me. Because they wanted it to be a surprise, right? Like in terms of like either traditional Christmas tree, and do you hear him now? I don't even know how he does that. So, okay. But it's not like that here. First of all, I don't have no room in here for a Christmas tree, okay? And I'm in survival mode right now, people, okay? I told Andre, I'm not getting no Christmas presents. You got a house full of stuff, all right? But the Christmas Bureau will give you presents, right? So they had a bag of presents wrapped up. I told you that. From John, right? <laughs> Two of them. I just want you to hear this. It's so cute. But when I'm really tired and I just just want to get into the zone for a few minutes. But anyway, okay. So I didn't expect them to call me. I sure in the heck wasn't going to call them up and say, Where's my sixth box? I want my box. I'm like, okay, 
Well, some other family, you know, just went down the line, right? But they called me, said they wanted to come on Christmas Eve because they got Andre a bike. Okay. I said, fine, no problem. I think, like I said, they were really hoping it would have, he would have got up in the morning and, and came out on Christmas Day and there would be a bike under the Christmas tree, right? But his house is too small for that, right? So, as she's on the phone with me asking me if she can bring this bike on Christmas Eve, I asked her about, I said, oh, well, since you called, right? You know, the woman who dropped off the box was saying that there was supposed to be six boxes. But I just want you to know I only got five, okay? I, I thought that would be the polite thing to do, right? Just because... As a charity, you know, this is charity, right? You know, you want to know where your stock is going, your inventory, your donations, right? You, you know, they keep record of this stuff, right? You know, and in light of what they bought in terms of groceries and stuff, clearly somebody went grocery shopping, you know, at some point, and, uh, you know, there's receipts to that, and so if one box got moved to the next location, you would think they'd want to know about that. So that was the only reason I told them. <coughs> Just out of courtesy, right? It wasn't because I wanted the six box. I just wanted them to know that I was told this and this is what I got. And then we know in that little window of time from when those boxes were dropped off, I had a box from Amazon stolen, right? See? That's a new sound. Are you singing? Are you singing? What are you singing? You singing for Nana? Huh? What was the Beetle Bug song I was singing this, this, this afternoon with you? I was singing with him. Oh, I took a bath and little Mo. That cat is the strangest cat, I tell you. I'm in the bathtub, you know, rinsing, doing my hair, right? Because I like baths, right? You know? I pop myself up, and who's staring at me? Little Mo. She's sitting on the tub, right? She's sitting right there, right? In the corner of the tub, just watching me. And I'm like, okay, you little bugger. What you gonna do? Jump into the water and start swimming around? Like, she had absolutely no fear. She was happy to be there. So, of course, I started to sing to Little Mo. I really need to bring a recorder with me when I do these things. Because it was such the cutest little song. <coughs> and she was just, you know, and I touched her, you know, like this, right? You know, on her cheek, right? And she didn't, didn't bat an eye, had no fear. I swear I could have brought that cat right into the bathtub with me if I wanted to. <coughs> anyway. <coughs> so when those drops, when those boxes were dropped, right? <coughs> rested <coughs> after I went through them, right? And, uh, what do you call it? Andre, shut up. And, uh, That's when my Amazon box got stolen. Like, what is it with boxes? One box goes missing when I'm told that there should be six boxes. Instead, I get five boxes. I get a box delivered soon after that, and that box gets stolen off my porch. Right? You're listening, eh? Okay? So, like, but I'm trying not to get annoyed over just boxes of things, right? <coughs> <coughs> as best as I can do it, right? In terms of not get annoyed. And, uh... Then I get a phone call. <coughs> <coughs> and, uh... She asked me if she can drop off the bike. Obviously, I'm grateful to have the food. Clearly, you can see I'm busy with it. Because I'm canning and I'm making preparations for more meals being frugal here, okay? Spread it out. 
and whatnot, and uh, ways not want not, and uh, then she tells me she's going to drop it off. I said, okay, fine. I informed her about the box that wasn't delivered, just for her records, right? And then she phones me today, right, asking me, you know, my address and stuff like that. And since I have her on the phone again, and you have to remember, people, I'm thinking about gathering up at least, I'm not, I'm not going to give them the whole envelope to everything that I've written before in terms of whatever, but I'm going to pull out that old 50-50 with the extended hours of operations till 3 o'clock with the one-year 50-50 on weekends you know, to generate X amount of dollars for their charity of choice. <coughs> and being that they do Christmas hampers, they themselves could, they already have a history of doing Christmas hampers. So they could actually assign themselves as the charity and then use that money with that 50-50 with the stipulation. It's a stipulation that they can extend their hours from 2 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the morning for a whole year on the weekend to run that 50-50 so that they can provide, you know, commodities to families like mine, okay? But, of course, my self-esteem is so low, right? I'm like, oh, you're so scandalous, Judy. You're not going to want to touch you with a 10-foot pole. And, and why? They're already established. They don't need you and your foundation, right? They, they probably don't, they're not, I don't want to say they don't care, but they're not inclined to partner up with a trademark, never mind one that's scandalous, right? And falling off the grid in the United States of America yet. Because I'm not renewing it. I have until December 27th, I guess, what's that, Boxing Day or something? Or day after Boxing Day, I don't even know, right? And to finally, you know, to put my application in, but it's just not happening, people. I have to think about my grandkids, and you know, I got to think about moving out of this house one day at, at some point in the future. And, you know, I have to think about just that kind of stuff, right? And like I said before, it's not nothing that I can't still do with somebody in the United States of America at a future date and through that process if it looks like it needs to be re-registered well that's a pretty simple process when you've been through it already so I'm not sweating it right but I am sweating the foundation here in Canada and the fact that when I'm going blind two I just don't have the stamina and the energy to do what I've already done you listening to this, right? What is that? Right? You know what I'm saying? Right? Getting old. Right? But, you know, I got this pub knocking on my door, giving me these donations, and it's not like I can give too much back. Sure, I can go off and buy a box of cookies and a box of, what is that called? Chocolates, and Andre can write a thank you letter and maybe draw a picture, and I can have Tisha drop it off, and, you know, I mean, you know, in my heart, I want to hand over that 50-50 as just as a rough draft with the, uh, with, with the stipulation that if, if they want to play pool, well, you know, we're playing, we're playing pool here in terms of we play to win, so, you know... <laughs> We want our extended hours of operations because we want what we're doing to be successful. Because, you know, next year, more than likely, they're probably going to help more families with Christmas hampers. I'm talking! Right? So, you know, but why should they partner up with a foundation that's basically a failure? <laughs> <coughs> with a <coughs> tainted trademark name because of all the scandal that's been centered around my family via through that 
manufacturing of poverty people and exploiting the poorest of the poor for corporate profit and personal gain for the public union sector, mostly in, co in partnership with that organized religion. I don't know if they can cope with that, right, if they do their research on me. So because of my self-esteem, lack of, thereof, right, and just, I don't know, afraid of rejection, I guess you could say, I'm reluctant to pass over this information with a letter to say, would you consider, you know, partnering up and pushing, would you, like, the application to the city of Delta for the extended, of, extended hours of op, operation for the sole purpose to run a charitable fundraiser for the duration of a year. <coughs> it has to go <coughs> in with the host the, to the to the trademark. <coughs> oh boy! <coughs> All right, my immune system's down. Um, it has to go in like it has to go in with the agreement of the business that's going to host the trademark and the fundraiser. So technically they almost have to be, um, like I can put the application in towards the city, but it would be better if they put the application in towards the city because they're already an established business. And they have a history with charitable acts. I'm living proof of that. <coughs> <clears throat> but are they interested in extending their hours of operations? And even if they were, would they want to partner up with somebody as scandalous as me on the foundation that I'm connected to, regardless of whether it has a trademark name or not? And uh, I'm like, just do it, just do it, just do it. It doesn't hurt to do it, right? You know what I'm saying? When one door closes, another one opens. The only thing is, is I have already knocked on so many doors. <coughs> Over the years, I'm burnt out. So, if I do this, I'd also put a little paragraph in there explaining my circumstances to say that, you know, I struggle with my eyesight I don't have a functioning board. I have a board of directors, but they're not active, right? So there are board director positions that are available if there's anyone within their corporate setting, which happens to be a pub, okay? <clears throat> and they have their own charity, obviously, that wants to take on the position of board directors that are more active, acting board directors, to, uh, Andre, shut up, to uh, not let the foundation fall off to the wayside and to retain on that Canadian trademark. And then from there, they can expand out through their network if they wanted to. But again, I'm shrouded with so much scandal that, you know, and I've, like I said, I've knocked on so many doors. So anyway, I'm like, just push past the fear. Push past the rejection. Push past the no. You know, at, at least you're putting it out there. Right? You know what I'm saying? But then she calls me up to let me know that they're coming. Now he's laughing. To, to let me know that they're coming to drop off the bike. Now, Andre doesn't know that this bike is coming. But he's going to soon find out. And since I got her on the phone, because he had already, because he asked me today, and I, and he's been waiting, right, to open these presents. <coughs> I mean, we could be around the Christmas tree right now, opening up presents in the evening, on Christmas Eve. That wouldn't be unusual, right? If that's 
that's the way I grew up, right? And then, of course, you get up in the morning and there's always a few extra under the tree, right? But we don't have traditional Christmases here, right? So when he came to me this afternoon, you know, he's been waiting, waiting, waiting since the 17th to open up these presents. And I said, go ahead. So he starts opening up these presents. And, like, everything that he opened up looked like it was for him. Okay? Right? He opens up this bag that's really soft. And it's these, like, tracksuit pajamas, right? You know, fleece pajamas. The only thing is, they don't quite fit him because Andre's got long legs, okay? So he, you know, they're, they're a little short, right? And I'm like, well, gee, they must have been for you, but they're just a little too small. But they're way too big for Amari. So that's okay. Nana will just put them away and you know, a drawer, and Amari will eventually grow into them. But we figured it was for Andre. And then he opens up another present. Now, he's he already got a, a helmet, and he already got a bike lock, but he didn't get a bike yet, right? As far as we know, nope, not, that's it, right, what they dropped off on that day. So he's like, you know, he's 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 maintaining on his... I don't want to say greed, but you know what I mean. You know how it goes, right? I mean, obviously, he was kind of disappointed. <laughs> All he got was a bike helmet and a lock, but no bike, right? And he had to accept that. Be grateful for what you get, right? It's not the dollar amount. It's the idea that somebody gave you something, right? So anyway... But he was excited to open up these, these these little packages here, right? So he opens up another one, because obviously Aunt Amari can't do it, right? And and uh, he goes, oh, it's a Smurf gun. I said, a Smurf gun? Well, that's not no good for Amari, right? He, can't be, he won't be able to shoot no Smurf guns. So, okay, that goes off to the side. Then he opens up another box. <coughs> <coughs> bag or whatever you know package present and he goes oh it's kind of like Lego I said Lego well that's no good for Amari right because Amari couldn't do that right and that was it and I'm like okay well I guess Amari didn't get anything it must have went with that six box it went to somebody else's house that's what I'm thinking okay that's kind of weird, right? Andre gets everything and Amari got nothing. And I know they wouldn't have done that on purpose, right? So so when she phoned me to tell me they were going to drop off this bike, right? Again, I felt compelled to tell her just so that she could log it down in her books so that next year the same mistake won't happen to a different family for a child that, uh, <coughs> oh boy, I'm having a hard time here, eh? <coughs> for a child that, um, understands more. See, Amari doesn't understand, so he doesn't know what he's missing out on. He doesn't care, right? <coughs> he's clueless. And, uh, so when she was on the phone, you know, I felt compelled to tell her so that she could log it in her books so that next year, whatever they're doing will be more proficient and, you know, less mishap for a different child that perhaps could understand that they didn't get a present. Because as it was, everything that was there wasn't suitable for Amari. Now, Amari is a special needs child. And Cebral Palsley has a wide spectrum of symptoms. Amari's on the severe end. These people wouldn't understand that because they're not exposed to a child like Amari, right? You have to be kind of exposed to them to fully understand their capabilities. Okay. <coughs> but I still felt obligated to tell them just for their records, right? <coughs> I wasn't telling them because I wanted something in return, or I felt cheated, 
because, you know, that's my once a year feel good somebody else loves us, you know, moment in time in terms of, like I say, I don't go to the food bank, none of that stuff. So when this happens, you know, it's just, it's just nice. I don't feel so alone, okay? You know, in terms of just, yeah. But I basically just, it, so I didn't tell them because I was ungrateful for what I got or didn't get. I told them because I felt it was the right thing to do for their record keeping. <coughs> oh, jeez. I got to drink lemon juice or something. Hot lemon juice with some ginger. <coughs> All that canning, standing over the counter. You have to remember, I stand over the counter for 90 minutes <coughs> at a time over that burner. <coughs> and the house is really dry. And my son has been having his fireplace going every day. And today he was burning a different kind of wood, some hickory kind of wood. I don't know. It had a totally different smell. <coughs> and I smelled it for hours. Ugh. Anyway, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. <coughs> he's got it real nice and cozy for himself downstairs with his girlfriend. Fire going, he's been a real lumberjack man. <laughs> anyway, so, so, I wasn't, I was I wasn't complaining. I wasn't looking to get something more, right? I wasn't ungrateful for what I got. But as I was telling this woman that, you know, she goes, well, it's a sensory toy. Well, it turns out <coughs> it wasn't a, a, a Smurf gun. <coughs> Hold on a minute. I was going to talk about this in my sewing room, but I don't even want to be in there right now. It's because I'm laying down and I have a lot of fluid and, you know, these eye drops, they go up into my nose and... I can taste that shit in my, the back of my throat. And I've been trying to spit it out, you know, because you're not really supposed to swallow it. And I don't always get to the sink, and I accidentally swallow it. And anyway, as I'm talking to her on the phone about this stuff, <coughs> she goes, well, it's a sensory toy. It's not a Smurf gun. It's a sensory toy. <coughs> I tried to cough the shit out, not working. <coughs> like I said, my son has been burning a different kind of wood today, and I've been smelling it all day. Anyway, um, I don't know what it is. It's something. And it shoots up air with these little balls that spin around. <coughs> and I guess it has some little lights. The only thing is the motor sounds like a vacuum. So Amari wants to start crying with it. <coughs> so it's not a toy that will work for him. Andre thinks it's cool, but I don't think... I can get Amari to adjust to it. Because some noises, there's just some noises he can't stand. And a vacuum is one of them. It, he'll just start, he'll just burst out crying. <coughs> if he's anywhere near the vicinity of that sound. <coughs> but at the time when I was talking to her on the phone, you know, everything that was opened appeared to be Andre's. And being that one box maybe went missing, Amari's toys went somewhere else. <coughs> so another family is opening up another present that belongs to Mari. But isn't age appropriate for what they got for their child? And they're probably looking at stuff saying, what's this? Hold on a minute. I don't know where he is. 
Can you tell you're on the video? Yeah. So anyway. And then what happens is I lay down and because, you know, I'm working for hours and hours and hours, right? You know, I get hot and cold, hot and cold, but more often, you know, I get cold, cold feet, always cold hands, usually because, you know, I'm working with water, right? My feet get cold because my back door, sliding door, is pathetic, but besides that point, so, oh, what was I saying? I get when I want to rest, right? I want to get under the blankets and just warm up. So it takes me a little while to warm up, right? And then I start to heat, overheat. That's what happens, and then, you know, with the different smells. And, right? Especially with this wood burning every day now. And you just seen, right? Because I was, I was heating up in there, too. And notice I'm sitting up now, right? I'm not so hot. But I'm getting cold again, so now I'm covering the blanket back up on myself. Because <clears throat> I only have so off, so long to get warm. <coughs> Other than that, I'm freezing my ass off half the time. <coughs> Somewhere on my body. If it's not my feet, it's my hands. Or I get completely chilled. New sound, eh? So anyway, as I'm talking to this woman on the phone, explaining to her that, you know, whatever toy was meant for Mari just didn't arrive. She got all flustered, right? And she got upset, and, right? And I don't know if she thought I was being ungrateful because she's, you know, like, or if I was just being a Karen, complaining, or whatever, because she got annoyed, kind of, like, in terms of, oh, now I feel so bad, and what do you want? Do you want Do you want a money order? Not a money order, a gift certificate. Do you want to, you know, the, the toys came back, came from Canadian Tire. In other words, if I'm not happy with it, I can take it to Canadian Tire. <coughs> but I told her Andre had already opened them, so that ain't happening, and... That's not the point. Amari doesn't really need toys, and like you know, clearly there was a misunderstanding, and because some woman had called me before and you know asked me right what the kids wanted and a sensory toy for Amari, but again, you know, every child with cerebral palsy has their own disabilities, right? <clears throat> and you don't really know what their personality is like until you're around them or what their strong points or weaknesses are or what they're capable of to which these people would be at completely at arm's length and they wouldn't know so you know it, it's nothing personal right and um, myself I'm happy just to get the food that's all I ever want myself is the food right anything that comes in as a gift to the kids well that's just a bonus that's that's the once a year that even the Muslims and the Punjabis and the Buddhists and every other Canadian, quote unquote, that's poor and below a, you know, a certain income, the Syrians, they all run off to the Christmas Bureau. It doesn't matter what their religion is because they, you know, they want the presents too, even though they're not Christian. Okay, think about it, people. You go to the Christmas Bureau, do you know how many Muslims and Syrians and Iranians and, and you know, Pun we don't get too many Punjabis in there, but you get a few of them. You know, you don't get a whole lot of Chinese in there, but you get a few of them. <clears throat> right? Like, so, but, you know, I have a house full of stuff for kids, so I'm not sweating it, right? It's just a treat for them. And if Murray didn't get, that's okay. He's not missing out. But I'd hate for them to, I don't want to say make the same mistake, but make the same mistake next year for a child that maybe understands more. And it could be a very disappointing experience. And that's why I informed them. Not because I wanted something back. 
because I felt cheated or because I felt ungrateful and I just got greedy and want more. But I don't know if that's how she interpreted it because she kind of got on the defensive a little bit. Oh, I feel bad and, you know, and do, do you, I can get you a, a gift certificate. Now you have to remember, that's not what I want. What I want is for their nightclub to take on extended hours of operations, put the application in front of the city with me in terms of, right? You know, we'll rewrite the numbers, dot all the I's, cross the T's, <coughs> right? Fill out the proper form in terms of, I know what needs to be done. I'm sure they know what needs to be done. The question is, they, do they want to do it with someone like me? With all the scandal that shrouds the foundation. Okay. That's what I want. I want... I want to give the foundation a chance. And maybe some new board directors. But they're probably swamped. They're probably happy with their routine. They're probably comfortable with what they've got. And they don't need to go outside of the box. I mean, there's a lot of probabilities in there, right? So, Andre, quiet. So, you know, I wasn't trying to be insulting. And now I'm even more embarrassed to add in a letter and saying, Hey, would you consider doing this over the next year? Just because, in my mind, it opens up all of Canada. And these people might be the ones to break that glass ceiling. But, would they want to? Right? Because, I don't know, people. Federal trademarks, after December 27th, that's it. Anything else we do in the United States of America is bootlegging it. Okay? We still got the bootlegging. Right? <clears throat> the original is always going to be the original. So I'm not sweating it. I don't know what to do out here. I'm talking. What is that? Oh, thank you, Andre. See? My grandson came. It's only 10 -01. Perfect. You did a really good job. I'm proud of you. I also forgot about it until oh. I just like looked at the Well, here. Time. Why don't you record it, Mario? I'll give it to him. Yeah, no. You're showing responsibility. Yeah, I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. Until I just looked at the time. No, well, that's part of growing up. Right? Because the more we can get it every 12 hours, the better for Amari. Nana, whoops, that was a big, that was too much. Nana's eyes are off the map. Doctor's going to be rolling his eyes when he looks at my time schedule. But on between Andre and I, we're really trying to just make sure that Amari gets it around 10 o'clock. If he's sleeping, sometimes he's sleeping, and I wake him up at 11, like, get up, get up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Amari, you gotta wake up. You gotta wake up. Yeah, yeah, because it's 11 o'clock, right? And, you know, as much as Nana's got that heart of steel. Mickey the Gardener cat. Yeah, she always there keeping an eye on uh, Okay. Well. Amari, right? But yeah, you know, you gotta have that heart steel, man. Did you, did you, is this like... It's the one. Oh boy. No wonder why it was so close. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> so anyway, I think they were a little disgusted with me. I mean, I could be assuming. Oh, there's a little mo. That's a funny little cat, that one. Yeah, the cat just moved in, made herself at home, put all the other cats in place. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and she communicates. That one tries to communicate with you. 
Okay. Here's a good one. Yeah, this video is already too long and I coughed halfway through it. <laughs> Just wait <laughs> well, more than it. half. Huh? Just wait till you're up on it. Well, whatever. <clears throat> That's life. Okay. Yeah. These I, cats I'm... are funny, eh? Oh, yes. Okay, Andre. And then we've got little black lily. They're almost comparable in personality in terms of cuddle bugs and like to be held and that kind of thing. Right? But they don't like each other, so. Not they're yet. More like calm well, they're, they're, they're competing, hands. that's why. Right? Cats are kind of territorial, but they won't get along. See if he gets the white owner. Yeah. 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 And Lily says, this is, this is my babe. Yeah, look at her. Look how she's putting her head down on his chest. Okay. Go finish doing what you're doing because it's going to be bedtime soon. So, because, you know, she's asking me, right? Like, well, we gave you a sensory toy. And I'm like, yeah, but I know it's a smurf, smurf gun or something. You know, it's not, right? Well, there's something else there. I said, yeah, but that's like like a Lego. That's a Murray, you know. He, there's no way he could do something with that. Right? You know. So I just reassured her that he didn't need anything. And, and then she says, well, what does he really need? And I'm like, well, sleepers. Because he's outgrowing his sleepers. The only thing is I don't know his size. Because I want to start sewing, right? As if I have time, but... That's what I want to do. I'm going to make time. Sooner or later, I'm going to make some time. Because it's simple stuff, right? It's nothing It's nothing too drastic. And uh, if I can, can, I can do that. <laughs> right? <clears throat> as long as I've got two fibers, well, two fibers over here and 13 or so fibers over there, right? I didn't use the honey today. I've been using it two times a day, very faithfully, and I've been going like this, right, trying to see, Andre, shut up, if there's a difference in terms of, maybe, maybe I can see a bit more, maybe I can't, I'm not sure yet, you see, this eye, much more brighter because I've got more fibers. They're optic nerves, right? This eye, I've only got two. So I can, it's much darker. <laughs> oh, anyway. This is my octave nerves, not my cataracts. Assuming that I even have cataracts. But tomorrow I'll use the honey because today my eyes were kind of tired. <clears throat> And, uh, what do you want? Why are you hovering around me? I forgot, I forgot my charger was off. Yeah, well, you don't got much more time, okay? It's getting late. Okay, well, I'm going to cook some noodles first. That's fine. And, uh, I was, I was just looking for my charger because my tin's about to die. Okay, well, it's going to be time to shut it down pretty soon anyway. You know how I feel about that. <sighs> I hate that thing. It's... <sighs> Anyway, that's another subject for another day. So, because I couldn't really stipulate the size, I just I told her, just don't worry about it. Like, he's fine. Like, and she, oh, I feel so bad. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, anyway, they come and they give Andre the bike. The man carried it up the stairs. <laughs> By the time I got to the door, they were already gone. Right, so I don't know if they were insulted or what, people. I, I just don't know. And I'm embarrassed to hand anything into them, quote-unquote, when it relates to the foundation. And that fundraiser that I want to put forward in front of the city of Delta. Only I can't do it by myself. I'm already feeling rejected just because of all this drama over boxes and bikes and toys. <clears throat> well, not so much the bike as it is the toys, although I am very concerned about this bike. <coughs> like, I'm in a dilemma. 
I even told him, don't get a bike. Because when we filled out, Tisha helped me fill out the Christmas Bureau, right? We asked, you know, what the kids want. And Tisha was typing it out for me. and She puts down bike. I said, bike, yeah, well, yeah, I do, but just don't. Because, you know, you know what the hell? The freaking neighbors steal it. Right? Like, so when they phoned me up and first asked me what the kids wanted, <coughs> it says bike. I said, yeah, but don't don't get the bike. <coughs> I've already had two stolen from my yard. It makes me paranoid to bring another bike into the house, like into the yard, right? And what do they do? They show up with a bike anyway. So, no, I got this bike. I don't know where to put it. Because he's not, like, he can ride it right now. <coughs> and I can, I'm afraid to leave it outside for any length of time. <coughs> Even if I double lock it with locks, I mean, there's nothing for a man to come by and, with bolt cutters and freaking steal another child's bike. Or even some chick. Because we don't know who's stealing it. I don't want to stereotype and say it's just men because it's not just men that steal. But whoever is doing it is, you know, coming specifically into my yard and doing it with intent. So I'm all paranoid with that, with that bike now, just so it's like trying to figure out where I can put it where it's not outside for now at least. And then we'll deal with the spring and the summer when that time comes. But, uh, I don't know. I'll think about it for a month or two. Uh, it's going to take me some time to get into my paperwork anyway. I have to put out the kitchen and everything, right? I, I really want to do that and continue working in here. That's what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but I'm just... I got I got a full day in the kitchen tomorrow again. <coughs> I have to get on with that laundry. i got to wash the couple of jars I got left. Box up those raisins. Of course, we're going to can the ham. I don't know if I'll can the ham tomorrow, but definitely the next day. Because I want to do some laundry. So I'm going to be doing laundry on, on Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> Jarring up raisins. All right. But over the next month or two or three, you know, I really should just don't be afraid of rejection. Find that 50-50 uh, that I wrote back in, I don't know, 2007, 2008, with the proposal that I put in front of As a matter of fact, I should see if I can find the proposal that went in front of the city. Yeah. The official paperwork. Yeah. With the response back. In terms of they denied it. The province approved the 50-50. But it was the city that denied it. And just just hand them a copy of it. And ask them, would you be interested in extending your hours of operations to uh, do the 50-50 for the purpose of a charitable act for your choice of charity, including your own? Being that you've done it already. That's a stipulation. You have to be. You have to prove to the government that you have already done it in order to qualify to receive the funds. And clearly, they would qualify. So, right, and send them, you know, a box of chocolates and a can of cookies and, like I said, a picture with a thank you note from Andre and. I'm thinking a handprint of Amari, his two hands, with paint, you know, love Amari, right, and, uh, so that they know that I wasn't being ungrateful, all right, I was, my intentions were not to be ungrateful people, I came across looking like I was ungrateful, no, not at all, I'm very grateful to have that food, I'm having a blast with this turkey and I'm happy that I got that extra hamburger and I think they gave us a sausage ring we already ate that and we chow down on their cookies on their chocolate chip cookies Andre says 
Oh, Nana, you know, it's not that hard to make chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> cookies like this. I said, no. But, you know, Nana has to clear out the kitchen first. You just have to give me a bit more time. And once it's done, yeah, we'll make our own, right? Because I don't buy stuff like that. So it was a real treat for us, right? And uh, I get that ham yet. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that. And um, Andre gets a bike. <laughs> a headache for me. I gotta have that heart of steel. You know? <laughs> right? In terms of, oh, what? It got stolen? Great. <laughs> you know? You can't worry about that, right? So, yeah. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot and assume myself guilty without going to trial first with a fair jury. So, you know, I don't want my low self-esteem to get in the way of progress if there's progress to be found, right? I don't want to be a party pooper when everybody wants to party. <laughs> So, I think I'm going to put my feelings aside and just dig up the paperwork. I'll look for the paperwork from the city. Oh, I don't even know where that is. But I'll look around. I'll give myself a couple, two, three months or whatever it is in my travels. Because I have to organize nonprofit paperwork anyway. And uh, when I find that paperwork, photocopy give them a copy uh, with a can of cookies and a box a couple boxes of chocolates and a couple of pictures from the kids and a thank you note and just leave it alone right so that if they got insulted because they thought I was being uh, ungrateful or whatever you know, it will just smooth things over right even if they say no. To which they probably would. And if that happens, I don't know, people, like I said. There's only so much I can do. I used to work long hours, so many long hours, typing out everything that I typed and working on the web pages. And going out into the community and see the air is dry. And you see me lick, licking my lips. <clears throat> and, uh, I'm just worn out now. My community activism is on a different plane. Right? And even then, you know, it's it's down to a bare minimum, right? Which makes me feel impotent, right? And I don't like feeling impotent, especially when I fought so hard to really make a difference in the world. So, wait, okay. 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 that's it. That's that's all I wanted to say, right? See, Mickey, look what Mickey does. Where is she? Where she is? Yeah. Mickey the gardener cat. She guards Amari. She is with Amari all the time because she's getting old now, eh? She's like almost 12 years old. Well, she is 12. Yeah, about 12 years old. Because the kids brought her home as a teeny weeny kitten before she was ready to leave her mother. Had her hidden out in the bedroom. Tisha brought her. Right? When we first moved in. So now she's like 12 years old, so she's getting old. And that's basically what she does. She babysits Amari. Where are you? Where's my hand? That's my hand. Oh, no, I can't see. I don't know. I can't see. <clears throat> she either sits there, well, she lays there. That's her favorite spot. Or she'll lay up, up there. Either or she's with, with Amari all the time. And then, of course, we know as soon as I go outside, she stalks me, right? So, 
Okay.